Windows 10 is available now in the Steam Deck, but do you really need to install it? So if you want to install Windows on your device, there are quite a few caveats right out of the gate. First of all, you can only do Windows 10. Windows 11 will be available in the future, but for right now, there's a feature called TPM that's required in the BIOS that's not active yet. So once Valve updates the BIOS, you'll be able to install Windows 11, but for right now, you can only install Windows 10. The other big caveat here is that Valve is saying you basically have to wipe your SSD and make Windows 10 the only OS on the device. The completely gets rid of SteamOS 3. There is a way to try out Windows without wiping your device that I'm gonna show you in a little bit, but the main way that you're going to have to install this is by wiping your SSD, which is obviously and honestly not ideal. And if you're sitting there like, I've had my Steam Deck for over a week or I've seen reviews where people have installed Windows, that's because you could install Windows before, but Valve just released critical drivers, which include the GPU driver from AMD, which you're obviously going to need if you wanna effectively play games on your Steam Deck, the Wi-Fi driver, which is super important because right now when you install Windows, you have to install it without a product key unless you have a USB-C dongle that has an ethernet port. Either way, you're going to need that. But then once you have the OS installed, you having a Wi-Fi driver, that's pretty good, right? Like you don't wanna be hardwired into your ethernet port from the USB-C dongle hanging off your device the entire time you're using it. The third driver they've included is the Bluetooth driver. Obviously that one's important for using an external controller and a bunch of other devices, like maybe even a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse but the most important thing that that provides is Bluetooth audio because they have not provided an audio driver for the device. So not only do the speakers not work with Windows on the Steam Deck, the headphone jack doesn't work as well. So you're going to have to use Bluetooth speakers or headphones. Either way, you're gonna get a little bit of latency, which is kind of annoying. And the fourth driver they included a little bit later was for the SD card reader in the device, which is good because I noticed over the weekend on the official subreddit for the Steam Deck that people were complaining that their SD card was coming unmounted. And obviously if you're playing a game that's installed on the SD card, that's gonna immediately crash the game. And if you have an SD card installed that you don't know when it's going to disconnect, that's just a bad day overall. That just doesn't seem fun. So it's good that they included this SD card driver. But honestly, I'm not gonna ding them for not having these drivers ready to go at launch because that's not the official operating system of the Steam Deck. They're basically doing this just to be nice. So if when you're installing Windows, you critically screw up, Valve really isn't obligated to help you at all, which kind of makes this a no man's land scenario. So what really is the benefit to installing Windows here? Obviously being able to use the native version of the Epic Game Store without going through a couple hoops in the desktop mode of the Steam Deck, that's a cool thing. Another thing you're able to do is play Game Pass games. And then of course, if you wanna play more online enabled games that aren't supported like Destiny 2, because if you use any of the workaround tricks to get Destiny 2 running on SteamOS, you could get hit with a ban by Bungie, which is obviously not ideal because if you're someone like me who sunk over 500 hours into the Steam version, version of Destiny, you do not want to even mess around with the idea of getting a ban. Now, I've also seen some confusion, people saying, well, if you install Windows and run Destiny on the Steam Deck, you could also get hit with a ban, but I've read over the whole statement from Bungie multiple times, and they're very clear about it. They're only talking about running Destiny 2 on the Steam Deck using Proton on SteamOS. So the only way you're really going to catch a ban is if you do it on the SteamOS side. But if after hearing all of those warnings, you really want to try out Windows on your Steam Deck, I'm going to show you how to install it without completely wiping your SSD. So the first thing you're going to need is an extra micro SD card. This is actually just for storage. I'm going to pre-place all of the drivers that are required onto this micro SD card. So once Windows is installed, I can drag them onto the desktop and install them. And they are some very important drivers. The first one is the graphics driver from AMD. That's super important. The next one is the Bluetooth driver. That's equally important because beyond using it to connect like an extra controller, like an Xbox Series X controller, you also can only use Bluetooth audio on the Steam Deck. The headphone jack and speakers do not work on Windows 10 because there's no audio driver just yet. The third driver is for Wi-Fi, so when you're setting this thing up for the first time, you're not going to be able to connect to the internet, which means Windows will not be activated. And you know, connecting to the internet without an ethernet jack is important. And then the final driver that's included is for the SD card reader. The SD card reader is going to work out of the box. It just kind of disconnects a little bit. So using their included SD card reader driver is important. And then the fourth thing you're going to need is a computer. I'm using my Windows laptop here. I'm just using it because I'm the most familiar with it and the media creation tool on Windows is great, but I think you can do this process on a Mac and on a Linux PC. So it's completely up to you. All right, so once you're on your computer, you're going to need the Windows media creation tool. You just Google that like Windows 10 media creation tool. The 
the first link you see is download Windows 10 disk image. Head down to the option that says create Windows 10 installation media and click download tool now. And once that tool is downloaded, you're going to open it up. And then once the Windows media creation tool is done getting things ready, you have two options. Upgrade this PC now and create installation media. We wanna create installation media. We're going to hit next. I'm using the recommended options for this PC, hitting next again. And this is the critical fork in the road where you need to decide what you wanna do. If you wanna completely wipe your Steam Deck and install Windows 10 as the only operating system, use USB flash drive. And if you wanna boot off of a flash drive itself, you can click ISO file. So that's that's what we are doing in this video today. And then after saving the ISO file, you are done with this software. I already did it, so I'm just gonna close out. And then the next software you're going to need is Rufus. I have it linked down in the description. So once you plug your flash drive into your PC, it should show right up. And then you're going to select the Windows ISO you already made. You're going to change the partition scheme to MBR. You're going to change the image option to Windows to go. You're going to make the target system BIOS or UEFI. You're going to check use Rufus MBR with BIOS ID and make sure that quick format and create extended label and icon files are selected. And then you're going to click start. Now I already made my Windows to go flash drive, so I'm gonna close out the program. But if you did click start, it would take about five to 10 minutes to get everything finished up. All right, so once your boot drive is created, we now need to get those drivers for Windows 10. So I just Googled Steam Deck drivers. The first link is Steam's store, store.steampower.com. It says Steam Deck Windows drivers are now available. You click that link, you head into the article, and then you click on the link in the article that says Steam Deck Windows resources. And once you're there, you can see every single driver you need that I already listed. All right, so now we're moving back over to the Steam Deck. The first thing you're going to want to do is shut the device down. You can do that by either holding the power button and selecting shut down, or just do it from hitting the Steam button, scrolling down to power and clicking shut down. Pretty simple. And just like with reflashing Steam OS, you're going to insert the USB stick here into the Steam Deck. You're going to hold the volume down button, and then you're going to click the power button and keep holding the volume down button because that's what's gonna get us into the boot menu. And then once you're in your boot menu, you scroll down to the flash drive, hit A, and that will start the device in Windows, which you will see is kind of weird in just a second. And the scariest part about this process is that the first time you boot Windows up off this flash drive, it has to restart once, but when you restart the Steam Deck, it goes right back into Steam OS. So what you're going to do is re-shut it back down and then turn it back on while holding the minus key, and that will get you back into the first time setup of Windows. It's like the second time setup. It's like the 1.5 time setup of Windows. All right, so thankfully and kind of surprisingly, the trackpads do work. They're oriented wrong, obviously, because we're in vertical orientation here. So what you're gonna do is use your brain perfectly to get the mouse cursor over United States. Then you use the right trigger to select. And then finally, we get into this getting everything ready screen and we've got Windows 10 running off of a flash drive, which is kind of crazy. And as you'll see here, there are four zip folders with all of the drivers we need. And now that all the drivers are installed, you basically are dual booting Windows on your Steam Deck. Now you have all these caveats, obviously with this dual boot solution, you're going to have to shut the device down instead of restarting it because you need to hold the minus sign to get back to that boot menu every time, which is a little bit frustrating. And then if you don't have a big enough flash drive, you're going to just have to use the SD card to install your Steam library onto, which is fine. But for all intents and purposes, we have Windows 10 installed on our Steam Deck. And if we want to just boot right back into Steam OS, it's super easy. All you do is go to start. And then once the device is shut down, you just boot it up like normal and you are back into SteamOS, just as if you weren't in Windows at all. So yeah, if you really wanna try out games like Destiny 2 or use the Game Pass app, this is the best option in my opinion. Yes, it's going to be a little bit slower than installing it on the native SSD that's in your device, but you'll be able to boot right back into SteamOS, which in my opinion is the best way to use the Steam Deck. I've really grown accustomed to SteamOS in the last week and on top of installing all of these games in the handheld mode, in the non Steam desktop mode, I've gotten a ton of different things to work, like a Wii U emulator, Discord, Google Chrome, Heroic Games Launcher, which is a native Linux version of the Epic Game Store that also includes GOG. I've got RetroArch, or RetroArch, I don't really know how to say it. I've got the Yuzu Switch emulator up and
and running. And finally, I have Spotify and all of this stuff works incredibly well. But the biggest and best feature of the Steam Deck that you lose by installing Windows, other than just Steam OS being well-designed for the device itself, is this special feature where the Steam Deck automatically downloads shaders before you even start a game up for pretty much every game on the device. That's how Valve fixed Elden Ring, and it is such a good feature because it eliminates basically all stuttering from every game you play because all of the shaders are pre cached before you even start a game up. It is legitimately cool, and that's a feature you also lose when you use the Epic Game Store on Steam OS. There are apparently ways to get that shader compilation working on the Epic Game Store, which would be great because I really want to play Final Fantasy VII Remake, and that game has terrible stuttering without that shader compilation. But still, for the vast, vast majority of the games you're playing on the Steam Deck using Steam OS, they're going to play significantly better than they do on Windows 10. And at the very least, if you want to play Destiny 2 on your Steam Deck and you have a gaming PC at home like I do, you can just use Remote Play and stream it from that PC, and it'll work really well. Steam Link is a great feature that Valve has been working on for years. So while dual booting Windows 10 on the Steam Deck is a relatively easy process, I personally wouldn't recommend it at this time. There just isn't enough native support, and honestly, there might never be enough native support from Valve because they really have no reason to support Windows 10 on this device. But if you really want to install it yourself, it's a relatively easy process, and I really hope this tutorial helped you out. These are a ton of fun to make. 